Hello. If you've done any amount of research on cybersecurity frameworks, you're probably a little bit confused. And so in this video, I'm going to go over the most popular cybersecurity frameworks. And by the end of the video, you're going to feel confident with the cybersecurity frameworks and you'll be able to talk about these cybersecurity frameworks to anyone. If you're new to my channel, I'm Nicole. I currently work in the governance, risk, and compliance field within cybersecurity. If you are wanting to build real world experience with governance, risk, and compliance in cybersecurity, I do have free projects below that you can check out. So let's get started. What exactly is a cybersecurity framework? So a cybersecurity framework in most industries are guidelines and best practices designed to help organizations manage risk. I say most because there are some industries that have mandated frameworks that they have to follow. A cybersecurity framework is often confused with a regulatory requirement, and these are different things. Regulatory requirement is a mandated set of rules and standards enforced by government bodies that organizations must comply to protect sensitive data. So if they don't have this in place, they're going to get fined millions and millions of dollars. Where if someone doesn't implement, say, the NIST cybersecurity framework, they're not going to get fined millions of dollars because those are best practices and it's completely voluntary. Why are cybersecurity frameworks so important if they're not mandatory? Cybersecurity frameworks bring order to the chaos. So they empower you to actually identify the risks, threats, and vulnerabilities within your organization before you actually have a breach. They also allow you to show that you aren't being negligent with your customer's data and can prevent fines later on. And also you'll, your cybersecurity insurance will be a lot cheaper. Some places have ad hoc practices, meaning they just pick and choose what they do with no actual governing reasoning behind why they're doing what they're doing. And so a cybersecurity framework gives you the why behind why you are doing certain things. And how many cybersecurity frameworks are there? There's a ton of cybersecurity frameworks. I'm only going to go over the most popular one. And some places use multiple cybersecurity frameworks depending on what they're trying to do. So it's not like you can only use one. You use different ones for different purposes. So let's get into the most popular one. So those are going to be ISO uh, 27001 risk management framework. It's going to be NIST cybersecurity framework. And then I'll also be going over the CIS controls, COBIT cloud control matrix, also the factor analysis of information risk. All right, so let's get started with the most well-known cybersecurity framework, and that is the NIST cybersecurity framework. The NIST cybersecurity framework is a voluntary framework that's designed to help organizations manage and reduce cybersecurity risk. And it has five core functions, identify, detect, protect, respond, and recover. This is a very flexible cybersecurity framework and it's very free. And so it's actually used in critical infrastructure sectors looking for a flexible framework to manage cybersecurity risk. While it doesn't have a specific control set, it aligns with controls from other industries. Now, what is a control? These are basically things that you can put into place to strengthen your security posture, often based on defense of depth. You can use NIST 800-53. You can use ISO 27002 control set for this. You can also use the cloud matrix and different control sets that align with NIST cybersecurity framework. If you are a vendor, you can map your security features to NIST cybersecurity framework. And then you can go to a variety of industries and show how your technology is compliant with those regulations that they have to follow specific to that industry. So say that you are selling a piece of software to a healthcare company. If you map all of your features to NIST cybersecurity framework and use the mapping worksheet that is available, you can map those features to HIPAA requirements and show how you are compliant with that. The next really popular cybersecurity framework is ISO 27001. A key selling point to this certification is that it demonstrates compliance with international standards and you get a, a certificate so then vendors trust you. And this is a framework for implementing a information system security system 
maintaining and improving it. Now they call it an information system security management, but this is just a, their proprietary term for a cybersecurity program. It emphasizes risk management as a foundation for securing informational assets. The ISO certification is the most well-known and is often required by vendors that want to purchase people's products. So if you get an ISO certification, which is very expensive, then you can show people that you are compliant and then they'll be able to purchase your product. But it's often adopted by large enterprises, multinational corporations, and organizations seeking international certification for their security practices. And so then they can sell more things. For the control sets used here, ISO actually has ISO 002, which is their own control set that is not free and you actually have to pay for. And this includes, again, control sets, things like access controls, cryptography, um, incident management, and all of that sort. You can also tailor this implementation for like GDPR and HIPAA and other regulatory requirements. The next cybersecurity framework is the NIST Risk Management Framework based on NIST 800-37. This is an extremely labor-intensive process, and so this is mostly used within the government and large corporations such as banks and a lot of healthcare facilities. And so this is a structured, repeatable process for managing cybersecurity risk for different information systems throughout their life cycle. It integrates security, privacy, and risk management into the system development life cycle. Extremely costly. If you have to comply with something like FISMA or FedRAM, then you would use the risk management framework because that's what is prescribed to become compliant with those regulations. The control set here, the things that they have to put into place is, is NIST 800-53. And this is extremely comprehensive set of security and privacy controls grouped into families like access controls, audit and accountability, supply chain, and system and communication protection. The next one on my list isn't so much a framework as it is a set of controls, and this is great for small businesses. So those are the CIS controls, Center for Internet Security. These are actionable set of best practices designed to defend against the most common cyber threats, and they're grouped into three different implementation tiers based on the organizational size and complexity. Those implementation groups are number one, basic hygiene is the IG1, which is basic hygiene. And if you're a small organization, you really want to have these put into place. So it's things like having multi-factor authentication put into place. Then you have the IG2, which is made for intermediate controls for medium-sized organizations. So maybe you don't have that big budget to implement risk management framework. You can definitely use NIST cybersecurity framework and use CIS controls and put into place for your medium-sized organization. Then you have IG3 implementation tier. Now this is meant for large high-risk organizations. Now the next cybersecurity framework, while maybe not so connected to cybersecurity, it is an important framework to know if you work within the industry and it's called COBIT and this is Control Objectives for Information and Related Technology. Now, this is a framework for governance and management of enterprise IT, including cybersecurity, and it aligns basically the IT goals with business objectives and provides guidance for proper risk management. So this is really popular with different enterprises, especially large enterprises. So if you're wanting to go land a job at a large enterprise, COVID could be a really good option. So for the control set that they use, they don't necessarily define granular controls, but they do provide governance and management objectives categorized into different domains like align, plan, organize, deliver, service, and support. Now, this one is different from, say, risk management framework because this is more focused on governance and business alignment and not so much risk management and compliance. It's also more process oriented instead of compliance focused, like some of the other ones may be. It's also very high level and strategic, uh, where some of the other ones are more prescriptive and tactical. 
The next one I want to mention because I think it's really useful is the Cloud Security Alliance Cloud Controls Matrix. So cloud is growing super rapidly and this is a framework for securing cloud environments. So if you're interested in cloud security, this would be a really good framework to look at. And it provides a comprehensive set of controls mapped to cloud specific risks and industry standards. It covers things, data security, identity access management, application, and you can map this to frameworks like the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, ISO 27001, and you can also map this to say PCI DSSS or HIPAA if you're working in that industry. You can see which controls are would make you compliant with those regulations. The next framework on here, the next one on here is the Factor Analysis of Information Risk or FAIR. This is a risk quantification framework that translates information security risks into financial terms, helping organizations with decision making. If you've ever done a risk assessment, they're a little bit qualitative, meaning there's no real numbers behind them. And so it's a little bit of a guesswork. And so having this framework really helps with the risk because then you can show management and like actual numbers and then that's what really they listen to. So if you really want to be data-driven, you would want to look into the factor analysis of information risk. Now, there's not really like a specific control set for this. You can work along with con control sets in different industries like NIST 853 and ISO 27002. And, and yeah, so just really useful for defining and assessing risk management and quantifying it and quantifying it instead of leaving it up to the practitioners, which is really needed, in fact. That's my conclusion of the most important cybersecurity frameworks that you need to know about within the industry. If you're interested, I in if you're interested in building real world experience within governance, risk, and compliance, I do have free projects below that walk you through that will help you gain real world experience. Check that out below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.